go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself to man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Tribe of Judah, the same tribe as Black Christ. I'm not that damn. 
Shalom, shalom, Israel, most high Christ blessed. Hey, y'all, we're going to start in a minute, y'all. Give me one minute. All right, Israel. Hey, look, y'all. Let's stand up. Um, hey, let's stand up. Let's face the east. Let's send up these prayers. I uh, pray. I hope y'all morning is uh starting off uh good. Well, I guess when you hear the scriptures, <laughs> it's all good in the morning. Um, I'm ready to send up these prayers though, and uh, go and get started. Hold on, y'all. I forgot the pause this thing. All right, y'all, let's, let's send up the press. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, y'all. Uh, okay, I'm doing this class on request. Somebody else is supposed to be a teacher this morning, but uh. They ain't log in, so I went on and logged on. But uh, most high Christ bless to everybody. Sister Israel, are you losing weight? <laughs> I did. I had lost like 20 pounds. But hell, these last few days, these last few days, man, I've been going off. I ain't going to lie. I just, I woke up this morning and I said, man, I got to stop it. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I felt bad because, like, this week, 
It went down. I ate donuts this week. I didn't eat cookies this week. I didn't drunk Cokes, Sprites. Oh, man. I ate a damn Reese's. <laughs> I don't even eat candy bars or nothing like that no more, but I ate a Reese's, man. I feel. I don't. Hey, look, I. I had just to think about it. I'm like, man, look, you going off. So I, I was good. I, I was way. I weighed two thirty four. And then I dropped down to uh, two fourteen. Last time I hit the scale, I was at two fourteen. That was good. And then I was gonna go and shoot down another twenty pounds. Hey, I don't know what the hell happened. I'm. <laughs> I don't know what happened, you know. Uh, and then you think I've been to learn my lesson, especially after taking that trip to the dentist and uh, getting that root canal. You would think I'd be like, "Hey, I ain't eat no sweets." Yeah, I love cake and ice cream. Matter of fact, so now look, I we had stopped eating biscuits for about two years. We stopped eating biscuits for about two years. So I guess my wife found some biscuits that didn't have pork in it. You let me tell it, none of them don't got no pork in it. But hell, hey, the scriptures say, <laughs> hey, go to First Corinthians 8 real quick. Hell. She found in one in, in the biscuits I was buying, she found an ingredient up in it that said pork. I mean, that's, that, that they say that it comes from, comes from the pig. So I'm like, man, look, I'm like, I don't think they come from no pig. She said it did. I said, all right, we ain't going to eat those biscuits no more. So we ain't ate biscuits in two years. But uh, this, here go First Corinthians chapter 8, verse uh, 9. It said, but take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. You know what I'm saying? So hell, yeah, she sat up there. She said, that they had pork in, I'm like, hey, I'm leaving them alone. The can of Pillsbury do have pork. It wasn't the Pillsbury ones. I don't know what's the name of them giants. It wasn't the Pillsbury giants, you know. But you can't let your liberty. Okay, like me, I ain't gonna read all the. It gotta say pork on it for me. If it say pork, I ain't eating it. For real. You have to get the bag. You talk the ones that, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think, do I eat the Pillsbury ones? I don't know. But the point is, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. Look, I, <laughs> hey, the point is, is that uh, I've been eating biscuits down there every day <laughs> for the past two weeks now. <laughs> I, would eat, I don't even eat bread like that. That's the crazy part about it. I don't even eat bread like that. Man, that's the point. I've been wondering how to tell what is the ingredients in pork. I mean, well, what is the what is the pork ingredient in the food? They be looking up every word on the can. <laughs> oh, grass is Pillsbury. I used to get those. Well, I heard it's, a, it's I heard it's one form of grass that don't got the uh, that don't got the pork in. Even gummy bears have pork. Yeah, they say you gotta get the ones that's made in Turkey, in, in the Islamic countries. Get the gummy bears that's made in Turkey. Hey, I stopped eating all manner of gummy worms and gum. I used to love me some gummy bears. I mean, some gummy worms. Not no more. Coming to the truth, all it is gone. <laughs> marshmallows, I used to love marshmallows. They gone. You know? Yeah, that's what they said, the grass biscuits. Now, look, I ain't trying to sit up here and uh, not the Pillsbury. Oh, man, I got those in the fridge now. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you, not all the grass biscuits. Y'all got to look on the ingredients. And, oh, man, I hate that. Why is I'm having this conversation this morning? Oh, man. <laughs> Just ask me whether I lose the weight. Put it like this, y'all. Let's get back to the point, guys. <laughs> a lot of people melt more than about to be messed up. Frozen grains is clean. Bovine collagen is derived from the beef cattle. 
It is a naturally occurring protein found in cartilage, joints, and bones of cattle. Bolene collagen is rich in, in the type I and E of collagen. This type of collagen benefits skills, hair nails, muscle tensions, bone. All right, what, what was this you just put up, Josiah? Yeah, I, I, I know it's some marshmallows that don't got pork in because they be getting them uh, at tabernacles. If it says gelatin is pork, it'll say beef gelatin. You have to look for gelatin, okay? Don't tell me my first brown has got pork in it. Oh, man. Hey, this thing, <laughs> hey, hey, it went left field for everybody. That's the kind of gelatin is clean for gummies. Okay. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Got to be disciplined. Got to discipline yourself from those processed foods to make your own biscuits. Hey, that's the truth. Now, this sister right here, man, this sister went old school. You know what I'm saying? Sister Masada. Hey, I used to love when my mama used to make them uh, homemade biscuits. Ain't nothing like homemade biscuits, man. Them things used to be so good. Then they be fresh, too. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you on point, man. You know, we got to quit being lazy. You just got to go and get us some flour, and we just got to whip that thing up. You know what I'm saying? They have a website with all the unclean and clean foods. Okay, all phrases. Well, I hope chicken ain't on there because people sound and say chicken are clean. Now, that's a damn lie. The chicken go about on all fours. You know what I'm saying? And it can fly. Somebody going to say a chicken can't fly. A chicken can't fly for a long distance, but some chickens can fly. If anybody been on a chicken farm before, you will see a chicken can fly. The scriptures didn't say how long the chicken got to fly. <laughs> the scriptures didn't say the chicken got to fly 10 feet. <laughs> if the chicken can fly from here to the top of the tree, because uh, a lot of farmers, they'll tell you that they didn't see their chickens fly from there to a tree. And it, and it go about on all fours. Chicken is clean. I don't know what, what people are crazy as hell. All right, y'all. So look, today is the topic. I don't know how we got on this right here. I guess the sister asked me is I'm losing weight. Well, not right now, Israel. <laughs> not right now. Hey, Jews look. Hey, you show that line. Hey, it, it, after coming to the truth and learning about all this unclean food, it's like, hey, we like, hell no, don't take our chicken from us. <laughs> Hey, you got brothers talking about it, chicken and turkey. No, oh, hell, you ain't not taking my chicken for me. No. <laughs> oh man. Hey, brother, hey, hey, you know what? Hey, you think it, you think uh it'll be a battle about when to keep the Sabbath here. We'll really be battling about eating this chicken. That was light work right there, but hey, he's gonna sit up there and take our chicken from us. Hell no, not Judah. <laughs> Oh man. Oh man, Miss Yen said he eat chicken right now. <laughs> hey brother, wake up in the morning and eat chicken, man. Oh man. Yeah, hey, them, hey, them Hebrews crazy, man. Them Hebrews vegans. <laughs> hey, watch them vegan Hebrews. They'll say all types of stuff. They were selling the pork in Jerusalem. Sis, never trust your enemy. Mm, dang. All right, y'all. And hey, let's get into the topic, man. I don't know. Hey, we get to, hey, everybody love food. We can talk about food all day. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm going to do a 15 minute uh, class, man, about unclean food. I'm going to do one about chicken. I got you. I'm going to do one about chicken. Hey, you know what? Somebody else brought this scripture. Hey, Regis, you crazy, bro. <laughs> Regis Ford, hey, you crazy, bro. Hey, somebody else told me that they read the scripture to me, and I was like, hey, it could be talking about fried chicken. Huh? <laughs> hey, man, y'all, wow. Brothers found fried chicken in the Bible. We sure do say take the fine flour. Oh, man, hey, y'all is crazy. I'll tell you, man, Israel is wow. <laughs> 
Oh man, I have chicken toothpaste. Oh man, y'all bugger that. Hey, they want to eat it more, more chicken. They don't want to eat. I'm telling you. But look, now nah, let me be quiet, man. I don't know. <laughs> hey, we hey, we do have to calm down on the chicken too, though. Because I'm gonna tell y'all this. All right, now look, all right, I'm gonna mess everybody there because I gotta say it since we talk about chicken now. So y'all know I'm I'm riding down the street. And plus, okay, I, I'm a delivery driver. I deliver food for Uber. So I'm riding, I'm driving. And hell, uh, I'm looking at all these fast food restaurants, all these restaurants, everybody selling chicken. But I'm like, where are all the chickens at? Because how much chicken is it? Hey, these restaurants pumping out all this chicken. They pumping out all this chicken. But where's the chickens at? That's it. Where the chicken at? You don't see no chicken farms in Memphis. I do a lot of traveling. I, don't, I barely see chicken farms outside of Memphis. I only see, every time I travel, I probably see one chicken truck with live chickens on it. Man, where the damn chickens? All right, that's it, y'all. All right, today's class is going to be, <laughs> uh, what was the title of the class? Godly Sorrow Heartfelt Conviction. My sister asked me what uh, Godly Sorrow was. Uh, she went, I don't know if the sister online or not, but hell, she can see the class if she's not. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. What is Godly Sorrow? Godly Sorrow is heartfelt conviction. When you convicted, from the, when you really feel convicted from the sins you committed. Let's read this. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Let's say, for Godly Sorrow work of repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work it death. Godly sorrow work it repentance. That's when you got that heartfelt conviction for your sins. That's when you go out here, you commit a sin and you, you know what I'm saying, you feel really bad about this sin that you committed. Some brothers and sisters ain't like that, you know what I'm saying? Some brothers and sisters ain't like that. They sit up there, they go commit a sin and hey, hey it's just a sin. You know what I'm saying? You, you ain't going to be able to, tr uh, to truly repent like that. You, I'm going to give you some examples of godly sorrow, too. You know what I'm saying? You can't really truly repent if it ain't godly sorrow. If you ain't convicted by the iniquity that you're in. That's why when you see a lot of brothers and a lot of sisters bug out of this truth, they, they done got corrected, they're in the midst of iniquity, and they don't want to acknowledge the iniquity. Go from there to Psalms real quick, chapter 31. That's one of the first steps to repentance. You got to acknowledge that there's something wrong with you. Some people don't want to see uh, knowledge that wrong with them. They'll tell you that it ain't nothing wrong with them. Is that godly sorrow? Hell no. Nah. They could be in the midst of sin, but they don't think there's nothing wrong with them. That ain't godly sorrow. All right, go to Psalms 32. Verse. Let's start at 1. <coughs> this is, David is about to give you an example right here of godly sorrow. Blessed is, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputed not iniquity. mean, he don't charge you for your sins. He forgives your sins. And whose spirit there is no guile, and whose spirit there is no deceit. Why? Because you got some. I'm gonna, hold on. Let me get the scripture real quick. I'm going to show you why he had to say that right there. You got some people. They'll get caught up in some foolishness or they'll get caught in the midst of sin and they won't show godly sorrow. Hold on, it's a scripture I'm looking for. Uh, let me see. Go to the book of Sirach. I think it's Sirach chapter 19. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 26. Because it just made me think of something we read, verse 30, uh, uh, verse 2. Okay, Psalm 32 and 2. I'm going to read again. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputed, not iniquity. Let me look up that word impute real quick. Impute. Just to make sure I'm right about the meaning. Okay, impute. Uh, ascribe to someone by virtue of a similar quality. Uh, a credit impute. Okay. 
Oh, they say finance. They say, okay, theology. Okay, ascribe righteousness, guilt, etc., to someone by virtue of a similar quality and another. So that's right. Blessed to the, you know, say, so say, let me read it again. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputed not iniquity, meaning they ain't charged for their sins. You know what I'm saying? You ain't guilty of your sin. He ain't made you guilty of your sin. All right. Uh, it say, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Now, that bottom part, whose spirit is in no guile, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 26. It made me think of this scripture right here. Because some of y'all, you will get caught in the midst of sin, but then after you caught, you really don't show for a godly sorrow. You really don't care. Matter of fact, you only... The only the only reason why you saying something nice is because you got caught. You didn't come forth and make confession. Let's read that Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 26. You just being deceitful. You got caught, and most likely you uh you just upset you got caught. You might go through it again. That ain't godly sorrow. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 26. There is a wicked man that hanging down his head sadly. But inwardly, he is full of deceit. You see that? You got some people, they act like, okay, they act like, oh, man, you know. They act like that they convicted by the things that they done, but they really ain't convicted. They just being deceitful right now. That's it. They just being deceitful. Oh, man, I shouldn't have did that, or I shouldn't have did this, I shouldn't have did that. That ain't godly sorrow. Godly sorrow works convict. I mean, uh, works with pity. Why? Because you really feel convicted by the things that you've done. Let's read this again. There's a wicked man that hanging down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit, casting down his countenance and making it as if he heard not. Where he is not known, he would do thee a mischief before thou be a word. You see that where he is not known. Nobody don't know this brother, nobody don't know this sister. They'll do you a mischief. They'll be even more mischievous. The only reason why is they feel uh why they acting like they're convicted is because they got caught. But they full of conceit. They ain't convicted. It ain't no godly sorrow there. They just hate they got caught. That's why I say he hanging down his head sadly, but inwardly he's full of deceit. He just putting on an act for you. They just putting on a show for you. You got some brothers and sisters in the truth. They some real good actors. They'll put on a real good show. Go right back to what we was at. Psalms 32. Psalm 32. Verse. Uh, let's start at the top real quick again. Hold on, y'all. I'm Googling another scripture. All right, what we is it? Oh, okay, verse one. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is not covered. So that's a blessing when the Lord forgive your sins and he covered them. Whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity, meaning he don't charge you or find you guilty for your sin. And whose spirit there is no God. Meaning you ain't trying to look mournful and like, oh, let's just say if you... uh if you got caught in the midst of adultery, now you want to look all sad and mournful. Oh, you would have kept committing adultery if you would have never got caught. You know what I'm saying? You would have kept doing it. Because while you was doing it, the only reason why you confessing, uh, well, all the reason why you coming forth now, because remember, they didn't make no confession. The only reason why they come forth is because they sat up there and uh, they got caught. You know what I'm saying? They want to look like they mournful. You know what I'm saying? But they just trying to deceive you. They're trying to look like, oh, man, I shouldn't have did this. But all they're trying to do inwardly, they're just trying to deceive you. They're trying to make you feel like uh, uh, they, they try to make you seem, they try to make you, they try to make it appear that they mournful or they bring it or they showing godly sorrow when they actually ain't showing godly sorrow. You know what I'm saying? All right, now what we will say? Let's keep going. Verse 3. 
When I kept silent, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. So you heard it this uh this day, but he's showing you what God and sorrow is. He said, Listen to him. When I kept silence, my bones wax old through my ruin all the day long. Because when he when he sat up there, when he laid, when he sent Uriah out to get killed and then laid down with his wife, the, the prophet, you know, said the most high said the prophet to him, and he sat up there and he he flat out repented. Now you read about, we're gonna go there too in Psalms 51. You know what I'm saying? Remember these examples. But notice how he's saying this for any of y'all. When you're in the midst of sin, it's, it's supposed to be eating you up in the inside. You're supposed to be convicted by the sin that you're in. And if you love the Lord, you're going to do, let's go to 1 John 5 and 3. First John 5 and 3. He say, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. If you love the Lord, you're going to keep his commandments. You're going to apply his commandments. You, matter of fact, I'm going to show you not only is you going to apply the commandments, go to Psalms 119, verse 60. So if you mess up, you fall short in this truth. Listen to this, Psalms chapter 119, verse 60. It said, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Look, you're going to make haste to keep the commandments of God. You ain't going to sit up there. You ain't going to be throwing God's commandments to the side. When you mess up, you're going to make haste to keep his commandments. Why? Because you love him. You ain't going to sit up there and put off from day to day. That ain't godly sorrow. Matter of fact, go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 5. When you show him for godly sorrow, uh -uh, you're going to make haste to keep his commandments. And you're going to be really hurt and convicted by the things that you've done. If you ain't hurt and convicted about the, uh, the sin that you're in and you ain't trying to fix it and make it right, you ain't trying to fix it and make it right, then ain't godly sorrow right there. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5. That's a concerning propitiation. Okay, propitiation, y'all, this is you trying to earn favor with the Lord. All they're trying to gain favor with the Most High. It said, concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. And say not his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. Don't ever say, just because the Lord merciful, he'll make uh, peace with you for the multitude of your sins. For mercy and wrath coming from him, and his indignation rested upon sinners. The Most High got the right to be angry with sinners, and he got the right to judge sinners. That's what indignation is. Indignation is righteous anger. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. You see that God, when you, that God is our work work repentance. You ain't going to put off from day to day. You're going to repent. You're going to get your spirit in the chest. Why? Because you feeling deep down and inside, you hurt by this sin that you are committed against the Lord. You know what I'm saying? You hurt by that. You're like, hey, I, I sinned against the Father. Make no terror to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. You hear that? And you never know when the Lord is going to sit down and say, hey, all right, they've been putting off from day to day. They should have been repented of this. All right, bam, I'm going to judge them now. Suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And while you and your security, while you think everything good, oh, everything cool. Oh, the most high, he's merciful. He's going to forgive me. And your security, you're going to be destroyed. So God and sorrow, it works that repentance, man. It's going to make you sit up there. If you sin against the most high, you're going to make confession. You're going to feel bad about the thing that you've done. You, it's going to eat you up in the inside. That's what... uh uh. David is saying right here in Psalm 32, verse 3. Let's go back. He said, when I kill silent, my bones wax old. He said, look, when I was quiet, hey, this thing was eating me up in the inside. It's killing me. This sin I'm in is killing me. Through my roaring all the day long, through his longing. That's what it's talking about. Hold on. Let me look at it make sure. 
through his longing. Uh, yeah, that's what it's talking about through his longing, through his mourning, through his cry. All the day long. Let me read out verse four. The reason why y'all be, I sit up there, I be have to double check because I know you got, man, you be having haters all online. They be trying to catch you slipping. So I be trying to make sure I'm saying the right things. All right, verse four. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. For moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Salah. You see that? He felt bad in the inside about the things that he done. He was really convicted. He was convicted by what he done. That's God and sorrow. When you when you commit iniquity and you ain't convicted, that is not God and sorrow. How are you gonna repent from that? If you go out here and steal some, and you don't feel bad about the stealing, but you say, well, you know, I needed it. How is you gonna repent from stealing? If you go out here and you lay down with another man's wife and you don't feel bad about laying down with this man's wife, you know what I'm saying? You don't feel bad about it. How How's you, uh, uh, I mean, you ain't convicted by how's you going to repent of adultery? Godless sorrow works of repentance. You know what I'm saying? If your birthday came around, you celebrated it. And you don't feel bad about celebrating your birthday. You in the midst of idolatry. How are you going to repent of your idolatry? Y'all get what's going on now? You get what godly sorrow is? Godly sorrow is that conviction you get, that heartfelt conviction that you get. You feel it in the inside. Let's read verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. You see that? With godly sorrow comes acknowledging your sin. You know what I'm saying? Godly sorrow comes with acknowledging your iniquity. It's saying, I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord. Godly, godly, godly sorrow comes with you acknowledging your sin, and godly sorrow comes with you confessing your sin. Confessing. You know what I'm saying? Not you getting caught. In, not you getting caught in the midst of sin. You got to acknowledge it. You got to confess it. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, you it's, you know what I'm saying? got to be eating you up in the inside. That's why you have a lot of brothers and sisters. I ain't going to say, I say a lot of brothers and sisters, they'll, be, they'll come forth and they'll make confession. And they'll be like, man, this felt good. They'll be like, man, this felt good to uh to to let it out. And you it, it's like all praises to the most high. It's supposed to feel good to get it out. Cause it's a weight that's off you now. You know what I'm saying? For real. It was eating them up in the inside. That's why they come forth and make confession. That's how we know when the Lord be with you too. That's how we know when the Lord is with you. <laughs> Cause when the Lord with you, you will go forth. You'll be like, hey, look, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm battling. Now, hey, I'll praise to the most high. You, you confessed it. You got it out. That means you acknowledge it. It's eating you up in the inside. This God is sorrow. That means you finna try to get yourself together. But you brothers and sisters that's hiding it and ain't gonna say nothing till you get caught. That ain't how is you gonna be able to how is you gonna repent from that iniquity if you constantly hiding it? That is not godly sorrow. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Now notice he said unto the Lord. He confessed it unto the Lord. Now with some of us, some of us, we might have to go to a brother and sister and let them know what we balance. Some of us, we might have to go to the leadership and let them know what we balance. Go to the elders, let them know what we balance. Go to James 5. You might have to because you could be confessing to the Lord or I'm going to show you something. Some of y'all, you be fasting and praying for nothing because you will go back and do the same thing. Let me see some. All right, God, I just thought of another scripture. And let's go to James 5 first. 
James 5. Some of y'all, you need to go to somebody and you need to confess. You need to make confession. You need to talk to them. You need to get counsel about what you're dealing with because you ain't going to be able to overcome it yourself. All right, here we go. James 5, verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any married? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. You see that? Some of y'all, you need to go to the elders for prayer. You know what I'm saying? When you're sick, you know what I'm saying? You need to go to the elders. When you're going through affliction, you might need to go to the elders. You know what I'm saying? And what we... uh. What we just started doing down here in Memphis, where we should have been doing it, but when I went to New York, I seen they was doing it. They do they do the prayer requests because when I went up there to New York, a brother had a prayer request, and uh, they told me, look, anoint him with oil and pray over. So that's what I did. So now, like you know, with brothers and sisters, we do a prayer prayer request in Memphis. You know, I had a brother come to me one uh, Sabbath before his surgery. And uh, we anointed him and we prayed over him. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're doing. That's what all congregations, y'all should be doing it. Make sure all the congregations that the, the leaders of the congregation is you anoint these brothers and you praying, uh, praying over them when they make uh, and let them come forth for prayer requests. All right, verse 16. It's, I mean, verse 15. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. You see that? The prayer of faith. Just say to see why, because you got people in the church praying for you. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes your faith might not be where they faith at. Remember when uh when Paul when Christ was doing all this healing. Hold on, let me see some. All right, I'm googling another scripture. <laughs> Go to Mark chapter five. Matter of fact, go to uh, Luke 7, verse, I mean Luke 17, verse 19. Then we're going to go to Mark 5. Some of y'all, your faith is weak, so you need people who got strong faith to pray for you. And you're going to know they faith strong. You're going to know a brother faith, a brother sister faith strong by the work that they're doing. You're going to see their works. Scripture says you know the tree by the fruit. Okay, Luke 17, verse 19. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. You see that? Every time Christ was healing somebody, he was saying, Look, your faith has healed you. Your faith have made thee whole. Go to Mark 5 now, verse 34. So that's why I say the prayer of faith shall save the sick. When you fasting and praying, do you have faith? Do you really believe? Let's go to Mark 5, verse 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. You see that? Thy faith, thy faith. If you read all throughout the Gospels, if you read all throughout the Gospels, you will read about how Christ is saying your, uh, your faith have healed you. I want to get one more. Go to Mark 10, verse 52, and then let's go back to James. Mark 10, verse 52, and Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. So everybody that was healed, that was healed through faith. Your faith might not be what it said. That's why you need somebody to pray for you. Go right back to James 5. Verse 15. It says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Because the reason why a lot of us are afflicted, the reason why uh, a lot of us sick, you know what I'm saying, is because it could be some, it could be some type of iniquity that's involved. That's why I say, and if he have committed a sin, if it could be the sin that you ain't confessed that got you sick. You know what I'm saying? And that's uh, the reason why you're being afflicted. It's a 
Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. So you want brothers and sisters who keep in the commandments, it's worth a lot. It's worth a lot for them to be praying for you. You know what I'm saying? So go right back real quick to Psalms 32, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquities have I not here. So when you show up godly sorrow, and the reason why I say godly sorrow will work repentance is because first and foremost, it's going to, the thing that you're dealing with or you battling, you're going to be convicted by it. It's going to eat you up in the inside. And when it eats you up in the inside, guess what you're going to do? You're going to acknowledge it, and you're going to make confession. You don't acknowledge that it's so wrong, you're going to make confession. Some of y'all now notice I said, remember the scripture saying he confessed his transgression unto the Lord. He ain't saying go around and stand up in front of the congregation and say, oh, I did this and I did that. You know what I'm saying? He ain't saying do that because some brothers and sisters, they balance spirits. You know what I'm saying? Some brothers and sisters balance different spirits. You don't want to stand up and confess in front of the whole congregation and now people like, instead of them, some people ain't as merciful as others. Some people want you thrown out the congregation. Some people understand the scriptures and be like, no, this brother came forth and confessed. This sister came forth and confessed. Hey, we don't want them out of the congregation. Do you think they're going to be better put outside the congregation battling this iniquity? You know what I'm saying? That's why I like um, doing the Feast of Dedication, uh, I did a class. And matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, I did a class. Letting y'all know, don't never confuse mercy, mercy with partiality. You know what I'm saying? You got to know when to have mercy. You know what I'm saying? For brother and sister, they've been in the truth six months, and they battling smoking weed. Do we, do we throw them out? And I asked the classroom that question, and the classroom said, no, you don't throw them out. You know what I'm saying? If a brother and sister, they come in, they first three or four months, and they get caught in the midst of fornication, do you throw them out? No, you don't throw them out. They ain't been in the truth. They, just, they still, yeah, they got all type of filthiness on them. Throw them out, so what? Now what they gonna do? Just keep committing fornication? No, you tell them, hey, look, you sit them down, you let them know, look, you better need to forsake this sin. If you ain't gonna marry that person you with, you know what I'm saying, then uh, if you if you gonna continue to deal with them, and you don't want to marry them, we're going to put you out. And then you follow back up with that sister or that brother a month later. Hey, is you still dealing with such and such, such and such? If they say no, all praise to the most high. If they say yes, then you let them know. All right, I'm telling you, look, you're going to be put out. You got to go. You know what I'm saying? You got to go until you sit up there and confess your sin. Because you can't be sitting in the midst of us or fornicator. But mercy got to come in somewhere. Mercy got to come in somewhere when you're dealing with our people. Now, look, let's get right back to this godly sorrow thing. So, y'all see how, uh, now, oh, it was another scripture I wanted to get. Because we was dealing with your prayer and your humbleness. Some of y'all, you don't, you don't pray properly. Go to Sirach real quick. So, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, now this is a good one right here, but I don't want this one yet. All right, let's go to Ecclesiastes 34. And yeah, let's start at... Uh, 24. It said, when one prayed and another curse it, whose voice would the Lord hear? He that watching himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availed his watching? So is it with a man that fasted for his sins and do it again and go, I mean, go it again and do it the same. You see that? Some of y'all, you'll sit up there, you'll fast and you'll pray for your sin or you'll acknowledge it, you'll fast and pray about it, but you're going to do the exact same thing again. You know what I'm saying? Say, who will hear his prayer? Or what do it his humbling profit him? Why? Okay, what does your fasting, how did your fasting profit you? When you fast, that's humbling your spirit. When you fast, that's humbling your spirit. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to show godly sorrow. That's the point of you fasting. 
But after you fast and then you go do the same thing again, it says, who's going to hear your prayer? What does your humble prove? That's why some of y'all need people to pray for you. Even Christ said he got to make intercession for us. Go to Romans 8. Even Christ said, look, I got to make intercession for you because some of y'all, you when you pray and when you fast, even when you fast and you're humbling, you ain't showing godless sorrow. You ain't mourning in spirit. That's why, man, you know what I'm saying? I think about when I used to first come into when I first came into the truth. You know what I'm saying? When I had uh I had my all black room. <laughs> the room had to be converted. But I had an all black room in the house. And uh before I was in the truth, they had all black room was the smoke out room. Here you go up in there in the all black room, had day bed stuff in there, little couches, music, and you just sit up in there and get hot. But uh after I came to the truth. I'm like, hell no, nah, this is going to be the fast and prayer room right here. You know what I'm saying? So I used to, uh, when I used to fast, I used to cut myself off from everything, you know, and, uh, and, and, and try to really humble my spirit. Now, look, let's go uh, to Romans 8 real quick. That's why now when I, when I try to fast, I try to fast more than one day. Because some of us, y'all, we fast one day. Oh, man, you ain't hungry. Hey, you ate. You ate. Three donuts, three cookies. Uh, you ate. You went. You went to three, four fast, three, three fast food restaurants. Had the following day, you drank a whole gallon of water before you sat up there and fasted. You ain't hungry. You full as hell. You can go a whole three, four days without eating. Your spirit ain't humble. You full. You ain't afflicting your soul. It ain't no affliction there. You just drop a whole gallon of water and you really afflicting your soul right before the fast. You just drop two gallons of water. What does your, you ain't humbling your spirit. Hell, you ain't thirsty. You can go a whole day with two days without water after drinking two or three gallons of water before fast. Then you pin the whole fast. That's all you're doing. It's just straight pin. <laughs> Romans 8, y'all. Let me, let me stay on topic. Verse 26. It said, likewise, likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. See, that's godly sorrow. When you got them groanings that can't be uttered, some of y'all don't know how to go to the most high. You know how to go to him with them groanings, them groanings that can't be uttered. I mean, the most high don't want to hear it. Like he, <laughs> he, like he can't take that right there. He don't have, the Lord like, look, I got to do something. I can't take this. If Christ go to him with them groanings that can't be uttered, the Lord like, look, I got to do something. I got to do something. The Lord, you know what I'm saying? Now the Lord hearing your prayer. Now the Lord going to answer you. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of spirit. Because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So Christ got to make intercession for us, y'all. Sometimes Christ got to sit up there and step in. He got to step in uh, and, and make the prayer for you. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to sit up there. You got to go to. That's why the prayer of faith. When you got righteous brothers and sisters praying for you and fasting for you also, that, that's another thing too when you fasting. When you fasting, you make sure you get some people to fast for you because you might stumble again. But that brother and sister that's fasting for you, they might not be they they might not be battling the same thing you battle. So they fasting for, let's just say if it's uh if you battling lust, they ain't battling lust. You know what I'm saying? You watch, let's just say your lust is watching porn. They ain't battling with watching porn. Now they can fast and faith, pray for you to get that demon up off you right there. You know what I'm saying? And now while they fasting and praying for you, uh, now let's just say if you do fall short, at least you had them fasting and praying for you. The scripture say the fervent prayer of a righteous man availing much. Even though you fasted and you fell after the fast, you had other brothers and sisters fasting for you. You know what I'm saying? And this, that can help make you stronger right there. You know what I'm saying? That can help make you stronger because the Lord will hear their prayer. You know? That's why I say the fervent prayer 
of a righteous man availeth much. All right, what we at, y'all? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, y'all. I don't want to go to Psalms 51 in a minute. But before I go there, I want to I want to deal with David because the reason why I like dealing with David, David showing you, David is all throughout the book of Psalms. All throughout the book of Psalms, how to have godly sorrow. You know what I'm saying? How to have godly sorrow. Now remember we just read read in uh Psalms 32 that uh David said his iniquity was eating him up in the inside. And he acknowledged it and he made confession. He confessed it to the Lord. Now I'm gonna tell y'all this: don't go confessing your iniquity or your sins to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't trust everybody. That's the truth. You can't trust everybody. Make sure that's why the script says if you get a friend, prove them first. Let's go to Psalm 38. Let's start at one. Oh Lord, rebuke me, not in thy wrath, neither test me in thy hot displeasure. For thy arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thy anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. You see that? <laughs> hey, David, hey, David used to be convicted, man. He used to feel it. Look, let's keep going. For my iniquities are gone over mine head. As in heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. You see that? He said, look, hey, my sin, hey, my sin is gone over my head, Lord. They're like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. This stuff is weighing down on me. If something weighing down on you, you want to get that weight off you. Let's keep going. My wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. See, this is godly sorrow right here. He said, look, I go mourning all the day long. Lord, this thing heavy on me. It's weighing down on me. He felt bad for the sin that he committed against the Lord. That's why a lot of y'all, you don't fear the Lord. You fear a man. You don't want man to find out. <laughs> you don't want man to find out. All the time, the Lord know every damn thing you're doing. The Lord know everything you're doing. And sometimes the Lord has to bring yourself to the door in front of everybody to sit up there to get you to repent. And even after he's bringing it in front of everybody, some of y'all wicked as hell, you just hang your head down low and pretend to be mourning, pretend to have godly sorrow. Oh, man, you know, you're right, bro. Yeah, you're right. Oh, man, come on. There ain't no godly sorrow. And then when you turn your head, they right back being in the same foolishness again. <laughs> like, come on, bro. I just talked to you about this a week ago. You stick. Come on. You you put on that big old act in front of everybody. You put up a good act in front of everybody. He said, I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease. And there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before thee. And my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart panted. My strength failed me. As for the light of my eyes, it also is gone from me. You see that? This godly sorrow right here. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. That's that heartfelt conviction. You see how David uh, showing you that he's really convicted? Matter of fact, he said right here, uh, what was that? In verse... I thought he just, hold on, hold on, y'all. Let me look at it again. Let me read through it. Yeah, verse 10. My heart panted, my strength fell it. 
As for the light of my eyes, it also is gone from me. You see that? He said, oh, this Psalms 38, I just read 1 through 10. This verse 10 right here. He said, this, he feel it in his heart. His heart panted. Let's look up the word panted. Oh, here we go. Hell, I'm still waking up myself. Excuse me. Okay, panted. Breathe with short, quick breaths, typically from exertion or excitement. Oh, man. Okay, a, a, a short, quick breath. So let you know his, his heart was racing. He really was feeling it in the inside. Why? Because of his sin. When you read in verse 4, he said, For my iniquities are gone over my head. That's godly sorrow right there. Godly sorrow working repent, repentance. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, let's go to Matthew real quick. Chapter 26. Hey, right, let's do Let's get an example with Peter. An example of godly sorrow with Peter. The godly sorrow is a heartfelt conviction. The conviction you feel after you do something wrong. Imagine sitting against the guy. I'm just thinking about what David was going through. Imagine, you know, okay, David sinned against God, and he said his heart was racing. And he had he had he had a true fear for the Lord. He said his heart was racing. And it was killing him. It was eating him up in the inside. He was scared as hell. He feared the Lord. But some of you brothers and sisters, <laughs> hey, that's why I be sitting back, especially with all these folks that have bugged out over the past year. I'm like, man, I know they don't fear God worth nothing. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I know they don't fear God it's because the actions that they took after they left, a lot of the actions that they displayed, you know, for real. I have seen people that never made a Facebook post all year. Or, well, you know what I'm saying, never post one scripture all year. Then they leave the congregation, now they post the scriptures. Why you was at the, uh, throughout the whole year? We know you was out the spirit. Now you want to act like you in the spirit and you posting scriptures now. You know who were posting scriptures. Crazy as hell. And y'all got to watch for that type of stuff right there, especially Facebook. Facebook dangerous as hell. Because Facebook can paint a picture. People can paint a, paint a picture on Facebook like it's just straight up like everybody leaving when everybody ain't leaving. That's a damn lie. I ain't had not one person from Memphis, Tennessee leave. All praise from the most high. Mississippi, ain't nobody from Mississippi left. It's a bunch of our congregations. Like a lot of people ain't leave. These people who leave and they've been wanting to leave. But anyway, that's old news. Go to Matthew chapter 27. But a lot of them, they didn't got caught up in the midst of sin. You got a brother making video about me. Make a video about the sin that you was in. Brother ain't gonna make a video about the fornication he committed. You know what I'm saying? Brother ain't gonna make a video about how he tried to overthrow the congregation. <laughs> Brothers ain't gonna make videos about that. Brother won't make a video about you and try to make you seem wicked. Talk about yourself. What's the godly sorrow at? Is you even convicted by the things that you done done over the years? And then you still doing it. You still doing it. You won't stop. Then y'all then they sit in this class, they sit in our classes and listen to us, try to catch us in our speech. Instead of sitting up there listening to the scriptures and trying to really bring forth repentance. That's why a year or two from now, you ain't going to even see them no more. Why? They already felt multiple times under our banner why they had the protection of the Most High and they had righteous brothers to help build them up. You know what I'm saying? Now you by yourself. Now what you going to do? The people you rolling with, they ain't going to roll with you. Not for too long. You can repent, though. You can repent. You can come back. 
But when you repent and come back, you ain't gonna hold no position here, no type of title here. You will not hold a position here. All right, now what we at, y'all? What I said, Matthew 27. Hold on, let me look at my. I got. I only wrote a few scriptures down, y'all. Let me see. So, Matthew. Oh, Matthew 26, verse 74. Let's deal with Peter. Give you another example of godly sorrow. It say, then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which, which said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. You see that? Imagine this. Christ already told Peter what was going to happen. And after Peter sit up there and heard about what was going to happen, and uh, I mean, after Peter, after, after the prophecy was fulfilled about what was going to happen, it said he went out and wept bitterly. That's godly sorrow right there. That's work with repentance. How we know that works repentance? That was Matthew 26, uh, verse 74 and 75. How we know that work repentance? Because after that, he didn't deny Christ no more. Peter went and spread the gospel all over. Peter went everywhere to, uh, to spread this gospel. That's how you know godly sorrow work repentance. Now I'm going to see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I right, go to Matthew 27. Let's jump down to verse 1. <laughs> now I'm going to show y'all something. Now let's get two type of sorrows real quick. All right, uh, let's go right back to 2 Corinthians 7 real quick. I think we're going to start at verse 9 this time. Because I'm going to deal with Judas Iscariot real quick. I do want to bring out the scripture about Judas. All right, 2 Corinthians 7. Because it's talking about worldly sorrow too. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse nine. Hold on, let me make sure, y'all. Let me look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. Hey, y'all know what I'm thinking about. I'm telling y'all, I'm still half asleep, man. I'm still, I'm waking up. All right, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. For godly side will work with repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Man, you ain't going to be regret. You ain't, ain't going to have no regrets. You ain't going to have no regrets. But the sorrow of the world work it death. Now, look, I'm going to give you an example of the sorrow of the world. Go right back to... uh. Matthew, real quick, chapter 27. The sorrow of the world is when you feel bad about doing something and then you go and afflict yourself. You know what I'm saying? You go and afflict yourself. That's the sorrow of the world. You want to sit up there. You, people like, think about being people who commit suicide. Okay, uh, they go out, they do something bad, they feel bad about it. And then they say, well, I'm going I'm to kill myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to jump off this bridge or hang myself. Or, or, or however, they, uh, uh, however they kill themselves, that's the sorrow of, of the world. That's what uh, Judas had, Matthew 27, verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself. So now, he, now he's seeing the things that's going on. Now you, you, you're seeing that 
Christ and got condemned. Now you want to sit up there. You want to act like you repent. They say repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is it to us? See thou to death. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. You see that? He went and hanged himself. That's that worldly sorrow right there. He felt bad about what he done. He felt bad about it. He was like, look, I don't want the money. You know what I'm saying? But he had to see all of that stuff take place with Christ. He had to see something bad happen to him for him to end up feeling bad about what he was doing. They ain't even want the money. <laughs> hey, about that. No, think about, hey, you got to imagine this right here. And they said, what is it to us? See that to that. They're like, look, hey, we don't care. Hell, you mean? You know? So now where we at? So that's their worldly sorrow right there. Godly sorrow work repentance. When you feel so bad, you're going to repent. You're going to change. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make confession. It's going to eat you up in the inside. You mean to tell me this, this one never eating them up in the inside? He only felt bad after he seen Christ? After he seen that Christ was condemned? All right, where we at? Uh... Let's go to James 4. They, they, they want heartfelt felt conviction. They want godly sorrow. That was the sorrow of the world. After you see what's taking place and what's going on, now you want to sit up there. You want to try to feel bad and feel sorry. Now you want to go kill yourself because you feel bad about what you've done. James 4, verse 8, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. You see that? That's heartfelt conviction. That's godly sorrow. When you afflicted, mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. Humble yourself. That's their heartfelt conviction right there. When you afflicted, you mourn and you weep. Why? Because you feel bad about the iniquity that you in. Now, that make me want to go back to Ecclesiastes 35, just even dealing with prayer. Go to Ecclesiastes 34. 35 verse 14. Now this right here is the prayer. This is the prayer of the fatherless, of the widow, and of the humble spirit. Listen to this. Uh, Ecclesiastes 35 and 14. He will not despise the supplication of the fatherless, nor the widow when she poured out her complaint. That's why a lot of you sisters, y'all saying y'all single, the most high got you for sure. The most high, when it when it comes to the fatherless and the widows, oh man, the most high got you. But you gotta have faith. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all be like, oh man, I need a husband. Man, right now you got the most high, you good. All you gotta do is have faith and believe. And if you battling any iniquity, you make sure you confess it and you forsake it. Confess it, forsake it, acknowledge it. A lot of you sisters, y'all don't acknowledge your sins. That's why you go die. I hate to say it like that. But it is what it is. You're going to die. Oh, you don't got nothing to worry about. All you got to do is apply the commandments. Listen, it says he will not despise the supplication of the fatherless, nor the widow when she poured out her complaint. It said, do it not the tears run down the widow's cheek, and it's not her cry against him that causes them to fall. See, some of y'all, you really ain't afflicted. You ain't in mourning. 
Everybody I'm reading about in the scriptures right now, they weeping, they mourning. This, that God is sorrow, they really hurt in the inside. Let's look up the word supplication. I know what it means, but I want to say the right meaning of it. <laughs> supplication got to do with asking for forgiveness in prayer. Supplication, the action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. You see that? It say he fell to his knees in supplication. It's a plea, a petition, a urge, a prayer. Okay, a request. That's why I say he would not despise the supplication of the fatherless, nor the widow when she poured out her complaint. You know what I'm saying? When you go to the Lord and make supplication, you ask for him for some, you beg for it humbly. Do it not the tears run down the widow's cheeks? And it's not her cry against him that causes them to fall. Woo! <laughs> oh, man. Hey, that's a cut. And hey, y'all brothers, I'm telling you. Hey, listen to this. It's not her cry against him that causes them to fall. Because she a widow. So who who you think he'll cry against? Look, let's keep going. He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor, and his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. You see that your prayer reach to the clouds when you are serving the Lord. When you're doing, how do you serve the Lord? Real quick, go to Deuteronomy ten and twelve. How do we serve the Lord? Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel, now this ain't it right here. Uh, sir, the Lord, you know, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me make sure, man. I ain't, I ain't, oh, yeah, this is it. And now Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. That's how we serve the Lord. Keeping his laws and his statutes and his commandments. Go right back to where we was at. Ecclesiastes 35 verse 16. He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor and his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. You see that through keeping the commandments. The prayer of the humble Pierce it, the clouds. You hear that? The prayer of the humble. The prayer of the humble. Those that humble their spirit. I, they think about it through afflicted, through mourning, through weeping. That's showing humility. That's showing humility right there. Not y'all that pretend to be weeping and mourning and afflicted. That ain't showing humility if you pretend it. The prayer of the humble pierced the clouds till it come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart till the Most High shall be whole to judge righteously and execute judgment. You see that? For the Lord will not be slack, neither will, he, will the mighty be patient towards them till he have smitten and sundered the loins of the unmerciful and repaid vengeance to the heathen till he have taken away the multitude of the proud and broken the scepter of the righteous. So I only wanted uh, the top part of right there, just dealing with prayer. On down, you get to going into mercy. You know what I'm saying? Um, godly sorrow, y'all. This is their heartfelt conviction. Their heartfelt conviction. You convicted in the spirit. You make the supplication to the Lord. You go into them, not just and not just begging and asking them for a bless, begging and black asking the Lord for a ble blessing, but also begging and asking the Lord for forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, let me see some Luke five. Let's go to Luke five.
Let's start at verse one. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Jinsara and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, let's out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, I mean, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. You see that? That's godly sorrow right there. That's godly sorrow. He doubted Christ. Christ told him to do something. He doubted Christ. And he fell down to, he said, look, depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Verse 9, for he was astonished. And all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. Because that's one thing that uh, Peter dealt with. Peter doubted a lot. He doubted a lot. He, he walked with Christ for three years and still doubted faith. Still doubted the belief. You know what I'm saying? He walked with Christ for three years. All the way up to the point where he denied that's why after that, that's why I said godly sorrow. When he after that last time he denied Christ, he went away with weeping and moaning. He was like, you know what? Hey, I gotta get it together. And he went and spread this gospel, you know, what I'm saying, all throughout the earth. Yeah, we reading the writings of uh, Peter's now and the works that uh Peter's that Peter and done and all the apostles. The godly sorrow, it works repentance to salvation. All right, y'all, I think I'm going to end it with that right there. Uh, I think I'm going to end it right there. Y'all got any questions? Mm. Brother said, that's me. Uh, that was uh, that was Luke 5, 1 through 8. The other said he fell to his knees. A sinful man. That's, that's godly sorrow right there. When you convicted about what you do, he was convicted. Peter was like, look, I ain't even worthy to be around you, Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, that was hard for conviction. He was like, but depart from me because I'm a sinful man. I'm wicked. Oh, yeah, we just read about that. Fast and do. But, some, but if you fast and do the same thing again, what does your humbling prove? So yeah, you can fast. Fasting, you know what I'm saying? Fasting is a form of mourning. But some of y'all don't know how to fast. That's why I said when you fast, you need to have people fast with you. Because some of you, you'll fast and you'll go do the same thing again. That ain't godly sorrow. Uh, so rock 35 and 15. I thought I just went over there. 
Uh, let me look at it real quick. Oh, do not the tear, do not the tears run down the cheeks, uh, the, the, the widow's cheeks, meaning a widow. A widow is what? A widow is a mother. It's like basically you single sisters that's out there. You would be considered a widow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you single sisters would be considered a widow. All right, where we at? It say, do not the tears run down the widow's cheek. I guess we can. You know, a widow is a woman, though, who had a husband that died. But you know what I'm saying? In the case, I like to use the word widow in the case of you single sisters out there. You know what I'm saying? You, you by yourself. You don't got a man. Really, the first man you laid with is supposed to be your husband. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of y'all, your kids don't got a father in the house. You know what I'm saying? It's a... Uh, do not the tears run down the widow's cheek, and it's not her cry against him that causes them to fall. Meaning, it's not her cry out in accusation against the one who making her cry. It's not she crying out to the Lord about the person who making her cry. <laughs> a lot of these, you know what I'm saying, a lot of these men bring heaviness to these single sisters. You know what I'm saying? A lot of y'all, and some of y'all wicked as hell. It is what it is. You, some of y'all didn't know how to treat the man that you had. That was with. He was in your child's life. He wanted to be with your child. You just didn't know how to treat him. And he got tired of you. <laughs> and some of you, you won't let him see his kid because he tired of you. He don't want to deal with you. You just wicked as hell. I ain't talking about, uh, I'm, I ain't talking about, uh, so I ain't talking about you. It, this, this scripture ain't talking about you. This is talking about these sisters who really endure and really, you know, show love for one of these brothers. And they crying out to the Lord because this brother, he's just a damn demon. He don't want to be with his kid. He don't want to be in this kid's life. He left them for broke. He done them dirty. So she crying out against uh, her cry out is about him. You know what I'm saying? And she asking the Lord, look, help her. You know, this dude did this. This dude and did that. This dude and mistreated me. This dude and done me dirty. He didn't left his child. You know what I'm saying? He won't, uh, uh, he, he won't provide food for his child, clothes for his child, roof for his child. So that's why I say it's not her cry against him that causes them to fall against the person that's making her cry and making them tears to fall. All right. Uh, oh, excuse me, y'all. God, man. I just learned by what you said that I need to learn how to fast properly because I got cut earlier. All praise. I have tried much. Cannot find a place for repentance. What do I do? Uh, I don't understand what you're saying. You say you tried much. Sir, I have tried much. Cannot find any place for repentance. What do I do? I don't understand what you're saying. You got to make it a little bit more plain for me. I know you said you tried, tried much. Tried, tried a lot of what? If you try keeping the commandments. Now, if you Esau, <laughs> I don't quite sure you ain't Esau. I'm hoping you ain't it because it says something about Zimbabwe right here. We're living in Canada. So you, you got to make it plain for me, y'all. But if you say you tried everything, and you still can't find a way to repent. And you ask him, what do you do? You can't have tried everything. You can't have tried everything. Because when you go through Matthew, the Lord shows us, not just Matthew, but when you go through the full gospel, the Lord shows us the proper way to repent. He shows us what to do to bring forth repentance. If you got some people, if you got people around you that causing you to offend, Christ said you got to cut them off. 
is you cutting them people off that's causing you to offend? Or is you still staying around? You know what I'm saying? Uh, not just people that cause you to offend. If porn causing you to offend, get rid of the cable. Or call the internet company and get a block. Put on porn. Tell them that you want all porn blocked. Now, you know you're going to be wicked as hell when you calling them back and saying, hey, I want to unblock all my porn. <laughs> and you know you're wicked as hell then. You should be catching yourself. You should be ashamed to call back and be like, hey, look, y'all got all my porn blocked. I need all my porn unblocked. You should be ashamed talking on the phone to whoever you talking to and saying that. When you calling them, it's different because people might be like, hey, they must don't want to watch this stuff, and they might be getting the block on for the kids. But when you call them back, talking about you want it unblocked, they know you calling them back just for you. Is there a class on questions to ask while proving? Man. Uh, man. Hey, probably about 100, 200 classes back. <laughs> hey, look, we done done so many classes. I don't know where all the classes at. But there's a class out there about it. But I don't know where it's at, sis. I know I, I know I did a class about it. I have tried keeping the commandments, tried fasting. It gets worse by the day. I am not Esau. Stop pouring, but the money troubles double. Can't work. Mm. What you mean, try keeping the commandments? You kept the commandments, they didn't stop? It's easy to keep the commandments. All praises, you ain't Esau. Because <laughs> when you said found no place, uh, Esau can't find a place for repentance. He can't repent. You can repent, though. You think you can't repent. You can repent. You just got to take whatever, whatever things that's in your life that's troubling you, you got to sit up there. You got to seek the kingdom of God first. You know what I'm saying? You got to set that stuff to the side. Let's get this real quick, Matthew 7. You got to stop worrying because that's what it sounds like you're doing. You're worrying. You got to stop worrying. Matthew 7. Is it Matthew? Yeah, Matthew 7. Not Matthew 7. Uh, Matthew 6, verse 33. It says, but seek, ye the first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't worry about your uh, the money problem. Right now, you're supposed to be seeking the kingdom of God and his commandments. It say, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for itself. I mean, for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry. Stop worrying. All right, Cap, I was thinking that Cap might be Esau, too, because the way he worded it. <laughs> and you know what? He might be Esau. You never know. Somebody said that's a fake account. I don't know. If it's fake or not, hey, look, stop worrying. The scriptures say, verse 31, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what with all shall we be clothed? But after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father know it that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. Okay, what do you do when you feel like the most high not dealing with you? Man, that's that's a hard question for me, sis. So <laughs> hey, I never felt like the most high wasn't dealing with me. I know the most high working with me. You know, I never felt like that. You should feel the same way too because you're listening to the word right now. The most I'm working with you. 
you being edified in the scripts. He is working with you. Some of the stuff that came out today, guess what? You needed to hear. If you didn't need to hear none of this today, I guarantee you it's another teacher that's going to teach later on the day that's going to bring out some stuff that you need to hear. So the Lord is working with you. But now nah, that's when your faith kick in. You got to pray for faith. Because for you to be feeling like that, that means you lacking faith somewhere. You got to pray for faith. Go to Hebrews real quick. Chapter 11. You got to ask the Lord to increase your faith. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. You should feel like that. You should know that the Lord is working with you. Why? Because you woke up. You know you're Israel now. Let me see some. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's where your faith come in. And your faith is, look, I know. I know the Lord working with me. I know the Lord dealing with me. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He is what? He dealing with you. He working with you. He patient with you. He merciful with you. He merciful towards you. He long suffering towards you. You must believe that he is. He exists. And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Go to Luke chapter 17 now, verse 5. Luke 17, verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. You got to ask. You, you got to ask for that. You got to pray for that. Lord, increase my faith. So I, I ain't never felt like that. I know the Lord working with me. You got to move the same way, sis. That got to be your thought process. Hey, you, you waking up every day, the Lord with you. He working with you. You got a job, he working with you. You able to eat, he working with you. You got a place to stay, you driving the car, the Lord is dealing with you. He might not be dealing with you uh, on the level that you want him to deal with you on, or you might not be feeling like you being blessed the way you want to be blessed, but the Lord working with you. So that's just, now you got to ask the Lord to increase your faith. Ask the Lord to increase your faith. You got to have faith. Me? <laughs> hey, look, I know for sure the Lord working with me. Just the way I'm talking is just letting you know that you, you can hear the faith in, in, in my speech when I'm saying it. And I'm going to tell you, too, this goes back to that godly sorrow, that heartfelt conviction. You going to the Lord, uh, you going to the Lord, uh, you know what I'm saying, with, with crying, groaning, and weeping, you know. But that godly sorrow. Okay, uh, Acts 17 and 26, where it says, one blood in all nations. Uh, that ain't the subject, Raphael. That ain't the subject. I was doing dealing with stuff that was pertaining to the topic. Acts verses that pertain to the topic, y'all, not off topic. Why did God allow an evil spirit to come upon Saul? Verse 7, 18, 9 through 10. Was it because of not? Hey, that's the truth. Not repenting. Not repenting. The spirit of God left him, and the evil spirit came upon him. Why? Because he wouldn't repent. So that's for anybody on here. If you don't want to repent of your action, of your deeds, after a while, evil spirit going to come upon you, and it's going to trouble you. And you're going to start doing evil stuff. And you're going to be like, damn, why I'm doing this evil? Why is I'm doing this evil? All right, that's it, y'all. All right, it's all good, Raphael. Uh, remind me, I think I teach Friday. Do I teach Friday or Sunday? Hold on, let me look at my phone. I know I teach Monday. Remind me Monday, because I got the answer up in here. But I'm just asking questions pertaining to the topic. 
man, I'm, I'm, I'm still tired. I really want to go back to the house and go to sleep. I got to go to work. Yeah, I'll pray to the Most High. Yeah, Sister Nigel, keep praying. The Most High is dealing with you. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to see do I teach another class this week. Oh, yeah, I teach tomorrow morning, y'all. All right. Yeah, I teach tomorrow morning, too. So uh, anybody, any topics? Anybody got any topics? Okay, go to uh, James 5, Sister uh, Naomi. James 5. So look, if y'all got any topics, post y'all topics. And uh, I choose one. I had to do this class because the sister had been asking me for a while. She sure had asked me a couple times. And I had forgot. It's James 5, verse 14. Let's start at 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any married? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Excuse me. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So what I was saying is that in all schools, you should be able to make a prayer request, a, a prayer request to the leaders of the church. You know, what they'll do, they'll anoint you with oil and they'll pray over you. But it's on you to go to them and ask him, ask them to anoint you and to pray over you, to pray for you. And the scriptures say, confess your faults one to another and to pray and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. You know what I'm saying? So it's good too with that to bring forth confession. Now like, let's just sit up there and say if you've been battling uh, a lying spirit, then you want to go to the leaders of the church and you want to be like, look, I've been battling a lying spirit and please anoint me and, and pray for me. And, and they should anoint you and pray for you. Okay, for single sisters, what about for single sisters with kids? What you talking about? Nation, oh, okay. Oh, class for single sisters with kids. Nation building topics, faith building topics. Proverbs 25, 17, meaning. Okay, you want a class on Proverbs 25, 17? Or you get woke. You just asked that question today. Yeah. I ain't go, uh. <laughs> hey, that's good. Hey, that's good. <laughs> All right, look. Okay, we'll go with it tomorrow. Just bring it up tomorrow, Shani. We'll do that with tomorrow. That's funny right there. <laughs> it's funny that you posted that. And I always bring that one up to, uh, so people, when they, uh, especially like when I go to somebody's house and it's be too late, I always bring up Proverbs 25 and 17. I'm like, I'm about to remove my foot right now. <laughs> okay, topic for tomorrow. Can you explain what a reprobate is? I think you swear reprobate wrong, if that's what you were trying to say. Reprobate? Reprobate. Okay, in the days of these kings. The days of these kids. Hey man, that sounds like a good topic. <laughs> Dealing with wicked thoughts. Okay. Reprobate. Okay. 
reprobate spirit. Not a reprobate spirit. Uh, I like the one, I think a good class after this, after the sister, Niger, asked her a question. I think a good class would be faith building. So let's deal with faith tomorrow. Let's deal with faith. Overcoming sins in, in time past. And I still like that uh the topic. The, the name of the topic just sounds good as hell in the days of these kings. <laughs> All right, y'all. Look, I'm gonna let y'all go with that. I'm gonna say shalom, most high Christ bless. I'm gonna give double honors to the leadership. Uh hey y'all, y'all pray for everybody that's out on the quest. Uh Shout out to all y'all brothers and sisters that's putting in this work. Most high Christ bless Israel. Shalom.